Bad boy, it's time to break it down Grab a mic, kill the stage, yeah, second nature now Mama said I make a flare, I told her I made a vow Just to wait around, in the year I'll put her in a house Hey, what's up everybody? This is Nightwing2303 from KicksOnCore.com Today I just wanted to go over my personal top 5 favorite performance sneakers so far this year in 2012. Um, this is something, I have something like this on my website, uh, kicksoncourt.com. If you go there on the sidebar, there is a top 10 of 12, uh, meaning a top 10 sneakers, performing sneakers of 2012. There's a list there. Um, each shoe that's displayed, 1 through 10, has a link attached to it, so it'll take you directly to that performance review. Now, that list is generated based off of the sneaker's overall performance score. So if a, a score on whatever shoe it is gets a 10 out of 10 overall, which is almost impossible, um, that shoe will be obviously ranked at number one. Is that shoe my personal favorite sneaker? That's not what that means. That is not my personal favorite. That is just a very great shoe as far as all of the score categories. Uh, traction cushion, material fit, ventilation support, all that stuff, it got very good grades, so the overall score is very high, uh, meaning that it's an overall very good shoe. So that does not mean that that is my personal opinion, that is a non-biased look at that particular model. Now this video is going to be my top five personal so far as of right now, so without wasting more any more of your time, let's go ahead and get right into it. So first thing you're going to notice and first thing I'm going to go over right now is that these three sneakers, which is Nike's top three athletes at the moment are not on my personal list and they are also not on the top 10 list of 2012. Reason being is that all three of them are a complete letdown in my opinion. Um, I felt that the LeBron 9 Elite and even one of their team shoes for LeBron's signature line was better. Um, I felt that the Kobe 7 had way too many flaws, too many issues with it. And then the KD4, while it is a very good priced sneaker at $95. Um, it just, there's other performance out there, performers out there that perform better than this shoe. Um, in my personal opinion and on paper as well. Uh, both shoes that will cost more than $95 and some that even come in at less than $95, whether it be on sale or at their actual retail price. So these three shoes are not on my list. I think that these are probably some of the worst performers that are on uh, this year's you know entire list whatsoever. Uh, I know that some people are going to disagree because some people love the Kobe 7, some people love the LeBron 9, and some people absolutely love the KD4. I'm telling you right now, I don't love either of the One three. last thing before I get into it, uh, the Dwayne Wade uh, Fly Wade 2 EV is not going to be on my list either. I do love this shoe, however, this shoe was my number one pick last year, and I feel that this shoe is so damn similar that I just, it would be wrong for me to put it on there. It's, it's like cheating. It's like turning in the same essay twice. Even though it's a good essay, it's still done twice. Like, you just can't, you can't do that. So, this is not on the list. I do think it's a fabulous sneaker. However, Jordan Brand cheated by basically releasing the same stupid shoe twice, which is something that I hate. It's something that Nike does quite often. So, coming in at my number five spot so far this year for 2012. Again, this is so far. This is not you know anything set in stone things can change in December and January so right now my number five spot is the Hyperdunk 2012 this was a very difficult decision because I wanted to pick the Adidas Addy Zero Rose 2.5 um, for my number five spot however these shoes fit me better personally and fit my foot better than the 2.5 so I absolutely love everything about this shoe um, do I feel that some of the components on there are are gimmicky with this particular model being the Nike Plus version. Yes, I do. However, if you don't consider the Plus version whatsoever, you just look at the Hyperdunk 2012. It's a very good model. Set around $140, which is almost a moderate price point like today, even though back when I was a kid, uh, that would be, you know, signature athlete pricing. So, um, this is a team model and it's $149 or $140. It's a very good shoe. Not my personal top favorite, but it is a very good shoe. It comes in at number five. Coming in at number four, this is the Jordan Mello M8. Um, I feel that Jordan Brand's top three athletes, uh, Dwayne Wade, Chris Paul, and Carmelo Anthony, I feel that their signature sneakers completely blow out Nike's signature sneakers. Um, personally, I think that the uh, 
Uh, the Mellow M8 is a much better shoe than the LeBron 9. I feel that the CP3.5 is a much better shoe than the um, uh, KD4, and I, I do think that the uh, Dwayne Wade uh, Flyway 2 slash Flyway 2 EV, I think that that's a better shoe than the Kobe, uh, Kobe 7. So um, I feel that this year Jordan Brand did better than Nike as far as their performance goes. Uh, one thing that's strange though is that they actually use Nike's tech. So they can't actually come up with anything on their own, but they've been able to use Nike's technology a little bit better than Nike had uh, so far this year. Um, but anyways, number four uh, is the Mellow M8. I love this shoe. I know that it is not a guard shoe for anyone wondering. I am a point guard. Um, I'm 5'7". Uh, obviously with a shoe size that's size 9, I'm not a really big dude. And um, I'm real quick on the floor. I like speed and I like to be able to maneuver which is something that is usually not found in a big man shoe such as this. However, I thought that this was a very fluid shoe and um, even though it's meant for a big man, a smaller guy such as myself that plays a one or a two can definitely play in this comfortably and it's a great price on top of that. So, Mellow M8, spot number four. Spot number three goes to the Li Ning Turning Point. Um, Li Ning is a fantastic brand. Uh, they have very great prices. Um, this is like what I was saying, like this shoe here might not look as cool as the KD4, but it is priced about a few dollars over and then Leaning constantly has sales and uh, discount codes on their website. So if you go to their website, you can save up to 50% off, meaning that you'll get this shoe for like 50 bucks. That's, that's half the price almost of the KD4. So I feel that this is a much better performer. I know that it doesn't look the way that everybody wants it to because everybody pretty much follows the hype and all that stuff, sorry to say, but that's the truth. Um, but this shoe right here is a fantastic performer. Whether you're a guard or a big guy, this shoe's going to be able to keep up for you or with you. And um, again, the price, I mean, you really can't beat something like this, uh, especially from a off brand. So this is my number three spot, leaning turning point. Um, I think that this is a fantastic brand overall, and this model in particular is probably the best model that they have. The number two spot is the Adidas Adipower Howard 2. Um, this is another shoe where price point was very close to the KD4, and it is a much better performer in my personal opinion. Um, this was actually my number one pick all year long until one sneaker came along and kind of knocked these out right out of the way. Um, but this shoe retailed at $100. It's meant for a center. I'm a guard, and this shoe is awesome. So, you know, if it works for me, then it'll work for a one spot, a two spot, three, four, and then, of course, a five, since this is Dwight Howard's shoe. Um, you were able to get these under retail for, like, man, I think they were, some of them went for, like, 60 bucks, um, like the all-star colorway and things like that. But um, they're about $79, $80 now. Uh, if you pay $100, again, it's it's 100 bucks. It's a very good price point especially seeing as how 140 to 150 is today's like decent price range for a shoe which is not even a signature so for having a signature like this at 100 bucks and it outperforms a shoe that is more expensive i think that that's something to basically behold and uh you know this is a great sneaker as i said before my number one spot all year long was the adidas Eddie power howard 2 until this shoe came along um the soldier 6 i absolutely was not planning on even performance testing the shoe. Um, I didn't think that it was even worth looking at. It's kind of a weird looking silhouette. Um, it's very strange looking and it's another LeBron and I, I do get sick of re repetition. Um, I re reviewed a LeBron 9, a LeBron 9 Low, a LeBron 9 Elite and this was just another LeBron shoe so I figured it was going to be you know another LeBron shoe it was going to play like that and uh, I was completely wrong. This is the best shoe out of LeBron's ninth year with Nike. Um, these make the LeBron 9s look like just horrible sneakers in my opinion and um, I absolutely love this shoe. I, I really can't say that enough. I think that this shoe is very very solid. It's 120 bucks. It's a very good price point so in my opinion especially for having LeBron's name and logo on it because you're looking at his ninth signature sneaker which retails at I think it was $170 and then you have his low top sneaker which is $150 and this is even cheaper than that so 
I think that this is the best shoe of the year so far. It's it's August right now, so of course things could definitely change by the end of the year, but as of right now, this is my favorite shoe of this year to play in um, by far. I mean, this shoe is awesome. It's super comfortable, and I'm definitely going to be picking up at least one more pair, maybe even a couple more, depending on how cheap they actually hit when they go to outlets and clearance uh, sale racks. All right, guys, so... As of today, August 2nd, 2012, this is my personal top five, as far as my personal top five favorite performers of this year so far. At the number five spot, we have the Hyperdunk 2012. Number four is the Mellow M8. Number three, Leaning Turning Point. Number two, the Adidas Eddie Power Howard 2. And at number one, we have the LeBron Zoom Soldier 6, or the Nike Zoom Soldier 6. Um, the, the best part about this uh, five-spot lineup is that you have a little bit of something from everyone. You have something from Jordan brand, you have something from Nike, and you have something from Adidas, which are pretty much the top three brands. And surprisingly enough, there is a brand stuck directly in the middle of both of those brands that is a somewhat unknown as far as the states go, which is leaning, and it was a fantastic performer on court. So... Hopefully you guys like this video. Hopefully that will hold you over until the end of the year. So, um, like I said, you can check out my website for tons more information on performance, um, including that top 10 list as far as the overall top scores go, or performance scores, that, that's their ranking. So please make sure to visit kicksoncourt.com daily. And um, until next time, guys, have a good one.